Okay, so this is lecture 1.4. This lecture is about significant figures, how it relates to measurement, and how we use it in calculations. So we learned in class that measuring requires that we take all numbers from the measurement device. That's the numbers that are on the device. And numbers on the device are have lines or they're calibrated. Okay, and so in this case we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the device. We notice that we're measuring the temperature. It's not quite 6. So obviously we're going to measure, uh, we're certain of the 5, and we're going to guess between the 5 and 6 calibration. So this is 5.8, and of course that's going to be your guess. All right, so I got 5.8 because of the number I'm certain and because of my guess. These two numbers, of course, are from a measurement device. So we say we have two significant figures. And two significant figures means that those numbers came directly from a measurement device. However, there are plenty of times where we get numbers not knowing what the device looks like and there's zeros involved. These zeros cause us a little bit of angst because sometimes these zeros come from the device, sometimes these zeros are just placeholders. So in any case, getting back to where I am here, I have two significant figures. Notice there's no zeros in front. So significant figures are significant because they come from the measurement device. They're not used as placeholders. Okay, so by the way, of course, if you didn't notice, I'm using the notes of the class. And here I have a thin wire. Okay, and if we were to measure this thin wire, we'd say definitely 3, 3.1, 3 3.2. I'm certain of, I'm not quite 3.3 .3 in my estimation. So my answer for the thin wire is 3.2 for numbers I'm certain of. And then I'm going to guess an 8. I'm guessing in between this part right here that it's 0.8. Okay, and of course I'm using a unit centimeters, just as this had a unit of centigrees. Okay, now all of these centigrade, all of these numbers, of course, are uh, significant because they came directly, and there's no uh, no difficulty here. And the first rule in significant figure designation is all integers, non-zero, are always significant. Obviously, if you're writing a number down, you got it from a measurement device. Okay, now let's scroll down our notes some more. And look at here. We have uh, a number given to us, which would mean that these numbers, uh, this number given to us came from a measurement device, so we have to guess that all these numbers were re uh, read off the device, and this last number is our guess. Don't forget that the guess is still significant, still comes from the measurement device. However, you should know that this guess, okay, comes from the idea that there is uncertainty in measurement, and of course, the, the, the lower your uncertainty, okay, the smaller the value of the guess. So the more precise the instrument, the guesses in a smaller part of the overall measurement. So we're in a, this is the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and the ten thousands place. Obviously, this guess is in a small, tiny fraction of the overall measurement. This is a very precise measurement. That's a C, because, oops, let's edit, undo that. And let's erase that. Okay, precise. Don't know why my spelling leaves me when I get on the video here. Okay, precise. Not accurate. Okay, so any case, moving down, we have the mighty rules of sig figs that are coming up into the screen. And I don't want to go into the rules. I want to start talking about how this all makes sense again before I give you the rules. So if I give you a number like 88 centimeters, you know there's, there's two significant figures here. Okay, two non-zero. If I give you 111 centimeters, that's three significant figures. Those are three different units that came from the measurement. Okay, but what if I gave you something like this, a hundred, a thousand, and let's say 10,000, well in this case, 10,001. Let's say that's grams. Well, you may say, Mr. Grodsky, look at all those zeros. Are those zeros significant? And you would say, yes, they are because they're sandwiched around these two numbers. If you measured this, and of course this would be our guess, and this would have to be read off the instrument, we would say that all these numbers are significant. So anytime you see zeros wrapped around or sandwiched between integers, okay, you would say those zeros are significant, therefore we would have a total 
of five significant figures there. All these numbers came from the measurement device. Now, you may, seem, you may be saying to me, Mr. Grotsky, now, wait a minute. If you get numbers off the measurement device, they will always be significant. Well, here's an example. Let's look at a very, very, very delicate piece of equipment, an analytical balance that would measure something like this. Let's make that grams. Look at that, 0 0.0037 grams. Wow, that's a small number. And small things do not do a very good job of measuring heavy things. So honestly, the measure device probably started measuring right around this integer. This part of the measurement was just a placeholder. And placeholders help us get out to a small place or even a big place. So placeholders are never significant. Okay, so therefore leading zeros in this case are not significant and we would say this number has two significant digits. Okay, and now we can say it the other way. If I have something like uh, 17,000, now something that measures something very heavy isn't very good at measuring something very light. Just can't do those two things at once very well. But it doesn't really matter Okay, 17,000 also has two significant figures because these zeros at the end are not significant because they, again, are placeholders that help me get out to that big value. So placeholders, again, are never going to be significant. Okay, now how do you know you have a placeholder? Well, a very small number or a very large number. Okay, so if you need zeros to get to a small number, none of these can be significant. And ending zeros can't be significant if they help you get to a big number. The only exception, party people, is when we have a decimal. If I have 17,000, but you've got a decimal point there, that's screaming to me that this zero was measured. Okay? And in fact, the, uh, that was, I would say, measured by the idea that that was my guess off the measurement device. Obviously, the rest are on there. But these numbers all are significant because they were, in fact, measured. There is certain cases where this could have happened. Okay, and I haven't forgotten my unit. Okay, and let's put units here to keep things uh, even keeled and correct. So the idea here is ending zeros, okay... Let's look at 108,000. Right now, how many sig figs do you think this has? Well, uh, I can't listen to you, but I'm giving you some time to think. If you think there are three significant figures, you're right. Because these zeros were placeholders. But if I placed a point right here, how many significant figures do I have now? You are correct. If you said six, because now that point tells me that these were measured. So... Again, mathematically, 108,000 with the decimal place or without it is the same number, but it tells us a dis different story about the different types of equipment that were used to, measurement, to measure it. It's very important that we think about what we put down on paper for the types of units and, of course, the numbers we write down that reflect the precise or the precision of the, uh, precision of the device um, accurately, I guess I can say that. Okay, you can't over uh, underestimate. You can't overestimate or underestimate the precision of the equipment. Okay, uh, now if I was to put, let me, let's go through some examples here, and let's get rid of some of this, and see if you can follow me. I'm gonna put some ones down here and see if you can follow my thinking in terms of how many how many significant figures. Oops, looks like I lost my eraser. Okay, let's do my eraser some more. Again, if you wanted to go back and see the examples, you can rewind. I don't know why. In any case, let's write, uh, let's get rid of this altogether. Let's scroll down. That wasn't working as well as I wanted to. And here we go. So I'm going to write some numbers down. You tell me how many significant figures. You're correct if you say three. How about I say 8070? You're correct if you still say three. What if I say 8070? Oh, oh, these are all centimeters with a point. You're correct if you say four. What if I put point zero 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 one zero? 
How many significant figures there? You'd be correct if you said two. Mr. Mr. Grodsky, these zeros don't count. Leading zeros don't count because they're always going to be placeholders. This ending zero was put here for a reason. You just don't put arbitrary zeros. It's because you measure them. Now, if you like rules, ending zeros count if what is present. Look at this ending zero doesn't count because there's no decimal point present, but here they are. Ending zeros count if a decimal point is present. Well, decimal point is present, so the ending zero counts. How about this one? And you'd be right if you said 3. Why? I got my sandwich 0, and of course these leading zeros don't count, so I'm left with 3. Really, there's no more examples to give you here. And of course, let's just stroll down to the mighty rules of sig figs. There they are. Okay? All non-zero numbers are significant. And notice in class, and I'm teaching it this way too, learn why they're important, understand this, and the rules make a lot more sense. Not going to give you the rules first. In any case, non-zero numbers, all integers, okay, are significant. Very simple. Sandwich zeros are significant, as we just discussed. And they could be sandwiched around a decimal place as well. Leading zeros are never significant. We know why, because leading zeros are always placeholders. Now, ending zeros aren't always placeholders. Ending zeros are, pla are just placeholders when there's no decimal point present. But when there's a decimal point present, ending zeros are part of the measurement. So that's why you get that here. So let's go through the try these. We have just two significant digits because leading zeros don't count. That thing was measured because a decimal point was present. We have sandwich zeros here, so I have five significant figures. Here I only have one significant figure because I've got placeholder zeros. There was no point there. Leading zero doesn't count, but this ending zero counts because a decimal point is present. And a what? Sandwich zero. This has four. And of course, here we have 1.050. And of course, this is also four. Okay, ending zero counts. And of course, we have the sandwich zero. Ending zero counts because a decimal point. You may say, Mr. Grodsky, okay, I get all these rules. What are we doing again? What we are doing is we're looking at a number from a measurement and we're basically deciding, hey, does the zero count in the measurement or doesn't it? Really, that's what, in a nutshell, that's what we're doing. We're taking a number, don't know what the, we don't know about the device, we're looking at it and saying, hey, do these zeros count or do they not? If you write 100 grams, I know the device, by the way, without writing a decimal point, that you guessed for that one these zeros were just placeholders, and this only has one significance. And you say, Mr. Grosky, now, what's the significance of learning that? Well, real quickly, when we take numbers from measurement devices, we have to be able to weed out the least precise numbers in our calculations. Case in point, in the precision rule, we're taking three measurements. We're going to add them together. I get a raw number of 20.76, the correct and it has two decimal places. If you look carefully, 9.3 is the weakest link. It has the least amount of precision of the other two. The other two have guesses in the hundreds place, hundred places. This one has a guess in the tenths place. So this is ten times more error ridden than the other two. So when I add error to other two errors, this is my weakest link. If you don't like the way I said that, think about this. How can my answer be more precise than my least precise measurement that was used to make it. I can't have something more precise. It's out to the hundreds place, yet I used a measurement that was to the tenths place. So I round. And when I add or subtract, I round to the number of decimal places. That's what precision is. Okay, where is your guess? If your guess is in the smaller part of the overall measurement, like it is here, okay, you're more precise. So we have to maintain the weakest link. So the weakest link, obviously, is right here. Why? Because it has the least number, least amount of significance. And therefore, my answer has to be rounded to the least level of significance. And that's how the precision rule works. Now, I'm not big on rules, but you, if you understand, okay, it should be clear to you at this point, I hopefully, anyway. The next thing, real quickly, and I'm almost done here, is the accuracy rule. 
When you multiply or divide, you're taking addition or subtracting and you're doing it multiple times. In this case, I'm multiplying, which means I'm adding a bunch of times. Now, if you're adding a bunch of times, what you're doing is you're multiplying your least confident significant digit, which is where the error is in because it was an estimation, over and over and over again. And if you add several, several thousands of times, like what most multiplication is, or if it's division, you're subtracting many, many, many times, because of the error being subtracted, or the error in this case being added or multiplied, you could lose the actual known value of your uh, measurement. You could lose its accuracy. So what we do here is we multiply the numbers, get a raw answer, but then we round to the least number of not decimal places, but significant figures. Notice there's three sig figs in this number, two sig figs. Therefore, my answer has to reflect the least significance, a least significant number. And that maintains my true value and gets away any kind of error. At least that's the idea behind it. Okay, any case, good luck. Talk to you soon.